Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. Today we're taking a look at an Ethernet adapter that plugs into your USB port. Nothing new about that, right? Well, this one happens to be a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapter, which is faster than the 1 gig adapters we typically see. And we're going to see what you can do with one of these, why you might need one, and how this individual one performs here in this review. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Pluggable, who manufactures this device. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this adapter is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is pretty much a regular Ethernet adapter. If you are connecting it to a gigabit switch, it will work exactly the way your current Ethernet adapters do. Uh, they say on the packaging that you can use a CAT 5E cable and get the 2.5 gig speeds. Uh, but I would suggest probably going to a CAT6 cable at a minimum, especially if you're going over longer distances. Uh, the device itself just plugs into your USB connection on your computer, and you'll notice here that it's a USB-A connector, because USB 3.0 transits 5 gigabits per second over that USB cable, and this only needs 2.5, so it should work within those bounds. But it also has a USB-C connector here on the cable, if you want to plug it into a MacBook or other device that has USB-C on board. And of course, USB-C is a confusing standard, and even though you're connecting it to a USB-C connector, uh, it's only running at five gigabits per second. This is not a Gen 2 USB device, just Gen 1. But when we do test out the throughput in a few minutes, we'll check it uh, both on a direct USB-C connection and then through a USB-A connection just to see if there's any difference in speed. Now, just buying this adapter does not get you faster Ethernet speeds. It has to be plugged into a switch that's capable of running at this bandwidth. Now, I happen to have uh, this rather expensive one that I bought a little while back. Uh, this is a Netgear switch that has four uh, 10 gig ports on it. However, this will, of course, be backwards compatible uh, with one gigabit Ethernet and it works with 5 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit. So when we connect this up in a minute or two, uh, you'll see that we'll have one green light on the right-hand side when we're connected to the switch. But if you plug this into any other gigabit Ethernet switch, it's only going to run at 1 gigabit. Now the question is, who needs these things if uh, we're all running on these slower internet connections. Well, a lot of folks now are getting gigabit fiber ethernet connections from their ISPs, and you can easily saturate that full gig and maybe not get your full performance out of it. Uh, something like this would allow you to get better performance out of those high-speed fiber connections, especially the ones that go north of one gigabit. Uh, if you're transferring large files throughout your home or office, uh, you'll be able to transfer them twice as fast through a single adapter, again, provided you're hooked up to the proper switch. So limited audience initially for this, but I think over time as connections get faster and files get bigger, uh, more of us will be using these things. Uh, the price point on this is $39, so it's significantly less than some of the 10 gig adapters that are out there. And I can see two and a half gigabit becoming more prevalent in homes first versus the 10. Another interesting thing when you compare a 2.5 gig adapter to a uh, 10 gig adapter is the size. So this uh, is a Thunderbolt 3 10 gig Ethernet adapter. And at the time I'm recording this video, this is about the smallest one you can get. Uh, so it's quite a big difference in size here. But I would anticipate within the next year or two, uh, this will soon be about this size. But right now, if you want something small and portable, uh, two and a half gigs is about all you're going to be able to do at this size and price point. So uh, let's get all of our equipment hooked up here and start running some tests and see if we can push two and a half gigs over this USB adapter. All right, so we're going to now hook this up to my Mac. So I'm going to plug the adapter into my Mac's USB-C port. Now on the switch here, you'll notice we've got a few more things connected. So we have a 10 gigabit connection right now over to my Mac Mini. And when I connect up the pluggable device here, what we should see on port number two when I plug it in is one green light on the right hand side to indicate that it's getting a two and a half gigabit connection. And it might be hard to see here, but indeed it is. Just got one light lit up here and we're good to go there. The adapter here is blinking as well. 
And now what I'm going to do is load up my Mac and we're going to run a program called Wi-Fi Perf. And what this does is it pushes a whole bunch of data over the network and we're going to be pushing that data to the Mac over there. So that Mac has 10 gigabits of bandwidth to play with and we should be able to saturate the full 2.5 on this adapter if all is working properly. Let's give that a shot. All right, so we are ready to run the iPerf test here. We're going to click on Run to push data over to that Mac Mini. And what you want to look for is right where my mouse is here under that bandwidth column. And as you can see, we're going at pretty much full blast here. This is just over 2.3 uh, gigabits per second. There's always some overhead when you're doing these kinds of tests, but this shows us that if you're hooked up to the right equipment on a USB-C connection, this will give you the bandwidth that they're advertising. And if you have a switch that can take a two and a half gig adapter, you will benefit uh, from just about every inch of the advertised speed here, which is really good to see. Uh, and we're going to now check and see how it does when we plug it into a regular old USB-A connection, uh, just because this Mac has some pretty fast USB-C ports. So now we're going to try to slow that down a bit and see if it impacts the performance. All right, so we're going to put the USB-A adapter over the USB-C cable here, get that to snap in. Uh, and now I'm going to connect this up to this little hub that I've got here that has a USB-3 port. Uh, but this is one of those Gen uh, 1 slower ports, so we know that this will be a slower port versus the one we just had it connected to directly to the Mac. All right, so we're going to jump back to the Mac screen now and run that very same test again, but now through that uh, slowed down USB-A connection, and there you go. We're getting pretty much the same bandwidth. Now, your mileage, of course, is going to vary uh, based on your computer's USB. Uh, so you may or may not see these kinds of speeds on an older computer, but it looks here as though we're getting uh, the full speed, whether we're connected up to a 5 gigabit per second USB-A port or a 10 gig uh, USB-C. So altogether, it seems like we're getting good performance out of this adapter. So that's going to do it for this look at the pluggable 2.5 gig adapter. It seems to be performing as advertised. I think this might be something we come back to in future videos because I've gotten some feedback as I've been live streaming the recording of this review to try it out with Synology NAS devices. So maybe we'll plug it into some other stuff and see if we can squeeze some more network performance out of things that have been locked at gigabit speed. So if you have some suggestions for what we can plug this into, uh, let me know in the comments down below and we will come back and do some follow-ups with this in the near future. If you know of any 5 gig adapters also, let me know down there too, and we'll try to get one in for review as well. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.